basic appraisal procedures page 157 what is different the question is often asked what is the difference between appraising residential property and non-residential property a common answer might be nothing but quite a lot the same fundamental theories and principles of residential property are observed in the same valuation process discussed in chapter one applies as well similar data is collected and analyzed for the physical characteristics of the property as is gathered for a residential dwelling and most of the same information as described in the appraisal report but perhaps slightly different the residential dwelling located in a commercially zoned area as a good model with which to start our discussion let's consider a residential neighborhood in the process of changing to commercial use ongoing conversation of the residential dwellings to commercial uses is taking place and in some cases the dwellings are being raised to provide for commercial development if the dwelling could property a might be nothing but process in chapter one as well similar data the as as for and a lot the theories and principles of as and for characteristics of most of the same as in the appraisal commercial applications what is different Americans with Disabilities Act he question is often asked, what is the difference, ADA, legislation passed in 1990? An extension of civil rights laws that guarantees a quite as to places of public accommodation to people with disabilities. Under competency rule and standard one of USPAP. An appraiser's assignment includes property compliance and how ADA regulations and requirements affect the property's highest and best use and value. Emblements, crops planted on the land, property of a tenant, and C0 ORD, but perhaps slightly differently. ANCA therefore considered an element of personal property. Highest and best use determination of highest and best use for residential in many cases is abbreviated by private and gross building area gba total floor area of a building measuring from the exterior of the walls includes the superstructure floor area and the substructure basement area properties oblique limitations that could single out only one or two potential property uses it is not uncommon for a non-residential property also to be subject to private and public limitations but often there is a broad array of potential uses. Thus, the appraiser may need to spend a considerable amount of time performing research and analysis to determine the highest and best use. We previously looked at an example of residential zoning regulations in Chapter 3 pages 159 to 160 offer an example of typical zoning regulations for a commercial classification illustrating the broad variety of potential uses a residential appraiser may come to the realization gross leasable area gla total floor area designed to be occupied and used by tenants measuring from the center of joint partitioning to the outside wall surfaces includes basements and mezzanines going concern value the market value in use of all property including real property trade fixtures, inventory, tangible assets, and the intangible assets of an established and operating business with an indefinite life. Mixed-use property has more than one notable use such as a mix of residential and non-residential. Narrative report, a written type of appraisal report. It allows the appraiser to comment fully on the opinions and conclusions of the appraisal. He has just stepped into the non-residential world when performing the highest and best use analysis in a market value assignment. The subject might be a residential dwelling located in a commercially zoned area or a non-zoned vacant site or land parcel. When the residential appraiser recognizes the subject property's highest and best use is something other than residential. He must consider death competency and his practice within the state's licensing and certification parameters before proceeding with the assignment. Trade fixtures, equipment a tenant installs for use in his or her trade or business and that can be removed by the tenant before the lease expires. 
The residential dwelling located in a commercially zoned area is a good model with which let's consider a residential neighborhood in the process of changing to commercial use. Ongoing conversion of the residential dwellings to commercial uses is taking start our discussion.